This is the story of Vergennes, and when I say Vergennes, it's the story of Vergennes wine. This is the wine, and now I'm going to give you the story. I'm going to prelude that by saying that actually Arbor Hill is the only winery in the world that makes the variety of wine called Vergennes. Now I'm going to give you the history of it. This goes back to the pre-revolutionary war in the 17... 60s or so, uh, England and France were fighting over North America. And North America at that point uh, pretty much consisted of, uh, of Canada and the 13 colonies. Uh, without going into a lot of detail, there was a kind of a final battle in right around uh, 1762 and it was the Battle of Quebec. And in the Battle of Quebec, the English were victorious and the French went home because they lost the battle. So then we fast forward to 1776, and we all know that on July 4th of 1776, the colonists declared their independence from England. <clears throat> uh, the battles ensued. And then in 1777, there was a letter received from King Louis the 16th. The letter, I believe, was to Benjamin Franklin, who in fact was the emissary to France at that period of time. In this letter, King Louis the 16th offered the Americans, first of all, he said, we applaud your effort to, uh, to declare your independence and win your your war against the English and we would like to help you with that so King Louis the 16th said he would or France would provide them with men money armaments and blockades blockades being the blockades of ship reaching the American shore uh, to provide the troops with uh, food and and munitions so uh, Although the record book isn't quite clear, it is sometime in 1782, give or take, that the war ended, the colonists were victorious, uh, and England no longer owned the colonies, uh, except England still did uh, own essentially Canada, and it wasn't until later they were, Canada was a, uh, now I'm trying to think of the name, I think I'll pass on because I can a protectorate of England for a long period of time. <clears throat> now we get to 1787 and there was a gentleman who was the leader of the Green Mountain Boys, a brigade in northern Vermont. His name was Ethan Allen and he had learned that essentially the head of state under King Louis the 16th had passed on. So he talked with his uh, brigade there in northern Vermont and said we owe we owe a debt of gratitude to the gentleman who helped us so much. His name was Charles Ravier Comte de Vergennes, meaning the Count of Vergennes. So they decided to name a city after him. And that city exists yet today, Vergennes, Vermont. <clears throat> so that's more or less 1787. Now we have to fast forward to about a century to 18, 1864. There was an amateur horticulturist by the name of William Green who was doing grape breeding. It has been told that he found this particular uh, grape uh, in his garden. I'm assuming it is one that he actually crossed, meaning made a hybrid, but we don't know the parentage. Uh, we do know the parentage from a certain standpoint, and that is that we know it has European uh, blood in the grape, and we know that it has American or Labus Labrusca blood in it. Uh, but that's as much as we know. For either he did not keep good records or the records that he did keep were lost over the last couple of hundred years. 
Now, he, um, he thought this was a good grape, and indeed it was, and he entered the name in the American Pomological Society, and it was accepted because what he had done was he was naming this grape after the city that he lived in, Vergennes. Now, popping ahead a few years, uh, Vergennes was basically a table grape, and it it was highly acclaimed because it was a late season grape, meaning it ripened in late October, had a fairly thick skin, so this meant that it had good keeping qualities because the refrigeration available back in the 1800s was basically ice or a very cool basement. So Vergennes was an outstanding variety um, for that particular purpose. So it came at the right time in the, in the late 1800s when the table fruit market was, uh, was very, uh, very good, I guess I would say. Somehow the grape, Vergennes, found its way to the Finger Lakes and was, again, um, a very good grape for the table fruit market. And uh, so in the 1880s, probably through about 1905, uh, was used as table fruit. Then uh, there was a period of time when the table fruit market from New York uh, hit hard times and that was basically because of refrigeration and grapes coming from California uh, which uh, could be refrigerated and actually were not uh, were not slipskin grapes as as Virgin's was but to make a long story short the grape was still cultivated here and cultivated for its original purpose, was, which was uh, table fruit. And the company I used to work for, Widmer's Wine Cellars, had made a varietal wine, meaning Vergennes, made from that grape in the 1940s, and I was aware of that. And in 2005, my cousin, who has the only source of these grapes that I'm aware of, came to me and said she had more fruit than was available for the, uh, or needed for the table fruit market. And uh, she wanted to know if I wanted to make wine. And I said, sure, so I did. That was in 2005. I entered this wine in a competition in 2006, won a gold medal, and I offered this wine to the city of Virgins. And when I called to, uh, to find out how and when I could do this, I learned that they had no knowledge of the Vergennes grape. They had knowledge of the count of Vergennes. And in fact, on July 13th of every year, they have what is called Vergennes Day. So actually in 2007, I took a case of wine, of Vergennes wine, and took it to Vergennes, Vermont, and participated with them on Vergennes Day of that particular year. And since then, we send them a case of Virgin's wine every year, and it, it's it's a gift to the city of Virgin's, and they use it as uh, uh, rewards, I guess I would say, for people who good, do good deeds for the city of Virgin's, and so that's how the wine is is used uh, today. I'll talk a little bit about the the grape and the wine itself right now. Right behind me is the actual Vergennes grape. Now, you're probably going to ask the question, uh, that is a red grape, but the Vergennes wine is actually a white wine. And this, of course, is true. The, the grape Vergennes is red, but it's a light colored red, so it actually makes a white wine that has a slight tinge. It's not even enough of a tinge to call it blush, but it has a slight tinge, so it's not perfectly clear. Um, and no one would mis uh, mistake it saying that it was red. And in fact, the juice of all grapes is white and it's only from the skin that a wine gets its color. So with it being a light red grape, this color actually dissipates during the fermentation process. So the wine ends up being kind of an off white. We make it in a dry style and have for years. 
It's actually 0.8%. This particular one, which is the 2012 vintage, is 0.8% uh, is residual sugar, uh, which makes it a dry wine. Basically, anything up to 2% sugar is considered a dry wine. The grape is very prolific in our climate. As you can see, there is a good size harvest of grapes on this particular vine. And it is the other uh, very uh, positive benefit is it's a, a winter hardy variety. So even though we've come off from two very bad winters here in upstate New York in the Finger Lakes region, this uh, vine is still providing us with a bountiful harvest this year. As I mentioned, it is a dry wine, uh, but when you first smell the bouquet of the wine, there is a nice fruit character to it, so it kind of fools us into thinking a lot of wines that have a forward fruit character end up being sweet. And so it fools us into thinking it's going to be sweet, but it's not. It's, it is a dry wine um, uh, with, with a nice flinty, I would say with a nice flinty finish. So it's a good wine, uh, particularly with, uh, with fish and, uh, and lighter fare. So that is the story of Vergennes, uh, and uh, I'd like to have you enjoy some with me someday. Vergennes from Vergennes, Vermont.